Okay, so let's jump in here and talk about how we're going to be setting up fuel injectors in our calibration file. So if we've went ahead and changed the fuel injectors to larger aftermarket, or even if we've installed larger OEM injectors, we have to characterize that injector in our GM ECU so it knows how to convert fuel mass into injector pulse width properly. If we don't define our injector data correctly, we're going to go ahead and alter our mass airflow sensor curve or our volumetric efficiency table, and we're going to make that inaccurate. We're going to be taking up the difference in those two tables to skew the data so that we can make the engine run properly. We don't want to do that. We want to put the correct injector data in right off the bat. So I've put this video first before any of the other videos because I see it being a common mistake and a lot of HB tuner files that I look at for GM Gen 3. So if we put the wrong injector data in, everything else is going to be calibrated incorrectly. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to work with injector data from Injector Dynamics, Fuel Injector Clinic, as well as changing OEM injectors to a different set of OEM injectors. So if we install something like a CTSV injector, a larger injector in our GM Gen 3, and we want to go and use some calibration data from GM, I'm going to show you how to do that as well. It's very simple, but we need to make sure that we do it correctly. So without further wait, let's jump in and see how we can rescale our injector data properly. All right, so let's get this video started. We're going to be talking about our programming our injector data into our calibration file. It's going to be very simple but we're going to have to go through that process so you can see how it's all going to work. So we're going to go up to our, uh, open our file. I'm going to go up to that file that I licensed here. Click open. And then we're going to move into our engine tab here. And then if we open this up a little bit, we're going to go move into our fuel tab. So click that. And then we go into our general. Now it's going to go into this uh, injector information here. So we're going to find our flow rate our limit, so our minimum injector pulse width, we're going to find that here. We're also going to find our latency information, or our dead time values, and then our short pulse limit adder. So this is going to be uh, a way we characterize these injectors to work with this GM ECU. So if we put bad injector data in here, it's going to screw up the entire air mass calculation. So remember that fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by desire air fuel. So we're going to be using, we jump into our airflow here, either our mass airflow sensor or our speed density or map sensor to calculate the air mass. So we're going to either uh, measure the air mass from the sensor, calculate it from our map sensor, and then it's going to go use the injector data here uh, using the uh, stoichiometric point. So we're going to have that air mass, we're going to divide it by the stoich point, and then it's going to give us a fuel mass. The fuel mass is going to be compared to this table. It's going to be converted then into an injector pulse width. So if we screw up this injector data, it's going to be delivering the incorrect amount of fuel based on the air mass we have coming in and based on the desired air fuel that we want, which is stoichiometric for idle and part throttle. So it's imperative that we get this correct or we, the only way to fix it if we don't have correct injector data is to go and skew up the mass airflow sensor curve or the main VE table. So we're going to